And in Canada, God help, formerly Catholic Canada, they've made the culture of death official. The government says that in less than a year, it will be providing medical assistance in dying to people whose only condition is depression or mental illness. It's just, it's, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to wrap your mind around what's going on, right? I mean, not just in Canada, but I mean, in Canada, what, what, what the literal hell is going on up there? Think about it. Again, imagine it's a person and not a country, just a guy on the street, walks up to the little French kid in Quebec and says, hey, Pierre, you feeling depressed? How about we kill you? How about I show you how to kill yourself? We have to personify this more, what they're doing. You know, there's, there's stalkers, there's psychos, there's killers running the world, setting up the Great Reset. They used to make horror movies about this kind of thing that's going on right now, north of the border, up in Canada, not far from where I'm sitting right now. They made horror movies about it. You're overwrought, madam. I've opened a window for you. A little air will do you good. You've nothing to live for, really, have you? Look down there. It's easy, isn't it? Why don't you? Why don't you? Go on. Go on. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Pretty scary. So... Kill yourselves, Canadians. So easy. Because Justin Jones cares about you. It's, it's become a cult. Justin Jones, the little ferret, is running a cult up there. Up in Canada, God died a long, long time ago. And religion, let's not forget, especially Christianity, especially Catholicism up in Canada, very evil. Remember all those Catholic nuns, those sexually repressed nuns, those psychotic priests from yesterday, from a long time ago? What were they doing? Oh, they were slaughtering the indigenous children in residential schools just for fun. Killing the kids. <laughs> Throwing their bodies in mass unmarked graves. Remember, we heard all about it a couple years back. Even the Vatican bought into it, horrified. Oh, Francis, we must go to Canada to apologize for the mass graves, remember? A major part of the Pope's trip to Canada is to apologize for the past conduct of Christians in regard to the treatment of indigenous peoples in Canada. More than 150,000 native children were forced to attend state-funded Christian schools from 1831 to 1996. The realities of the schools were brought to light last year when the remains of 215 children were found outside of a school in British Columbia. The pontiff on Sunday saying that this trip is only part of the church's attempts to right the wrongs of the past. Here's Justin, the little ferret. He's holding his teddy bear. He's kneeling at the mass grave. He's weeping over the Catholic genocide. Those terrible Catholic priests. <laughs> now, obviously, it was fake news, exactly as we told you it was at the time, but the damage was done. Here's what we said at the time, for what it's worth. Francis just today came out again, railing against fake news. You see that? Telling Catholics they need to stop with the fake news <laughs> as he's getting ready to go to Canada on a road show and starring himself. It's all about massive and exposed fake news involving graveyards that don't exist, bodies that don't exist, no evidence whatsoever. But Francis is taking that fake news, <laughs> taking it all the way to town. Oh, I know. Some of you got really mad at me for that, you know, because <laughs> they had this, the scientists out there with ground penetrating radar <laughs> finding tennis shoes and human remains, you know, ground penetrating radar. How dare you, Michael Matt? How dare you, insensitive racist? There are children out there. They're buried in, right next to the Catholic schools. Well, of course, it turns out that we were absolutely right. Not according to me, but according to the indigenous tribes people who were doing uh, in on the investigations. Here's one of them. July 24th would be the start of our continuing search for truth as we move from identifying 14 reflections in the ground underneath the Catholic Church to an actual excavation of the site. The excavation would be an effort to determine the truth of the reflections identified by ground penetrating radar that was done twice over this location in the past 12 months. 
We are now concluding the excavation of the 14 locations under the church. The archaeological team we hired from the University of Brandon, which is the same archaeological team that is relied upon by regional police agencies when doing archaeological excavations, found no conclusive evidence of human remains in their excavation of the ground under the church. Did, did, did you hear that? I didn't find any, any human remains. Isn't that a shock? I was just surprised. Because I thought everything that we saw on TV is always true. <sighs> this is what they're doing with everything, friends. Like I say, if the lips are moving, they're lying on TV. And so some people are saying, really? Well, really? This story's huge. It's all over the world now. Because remember, Francis went up and put feathers on. I'll get to that in a minute. Really? So what happened to those indigenous children? I mean, we know they, they suffered, right? We know they were, they, were, they, were, they were tortured terribly, right? What happened to them all? Well, 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 as we pointed out last time, I don't know what that was, a year and a half, two years ago, we found indigenous people who were telling the truth about the residential schools, but you see, nobody could handle the truth. Justin, P, Justin Trudeau didn't care about the truth. Pope Francis didn't care about the truth. Here's what actual indigenous people who went through the residential school system. Here's what they actually said. Is anybody curious? Concert pianist, librettist, novelist, and playwright, Thompson Highway's life has taken him from the trap lines of northern Manitoba to the stages of the world. His plays are studied at universities all over North America, and he has almost single-handedly created the vibrant and viable native theater in Canada. I would think that your life, your adult life, would be more informed by what was probably the dichotomy of your early years, the more exaggerated uh, extremes, I would think, than, than most people would have. Idyllic to start with, certainly less than idyllic as it became later when you were in, in a residential school. Oh, that's a, mis that's a mistake. Is that right? The residential school experience for me was a fantastic experience. Is that right? So much of that is reported, you know, that's, that's, that's uh, skewed. It's not quite right. They don't have the whole picture. There was a lot of us who had positive experiences yeah. at the Native Residential School. But I am, I've got to say, surprised when you yeah. say that the residential experience was, was a good one for you. Yeah, it was. I, um, learned how to, I learned how to speak English. Yeah. I learned how to play the piano. That started at residential school, the, the yeah. piano thing. Oh, yeah. You. They tried to educate us. They made mistakes, but they tried. So when they see something like that, that's why it was buried so deep. Oh, no, panic. What are we going to do now? We better come up with a better story. Those sick nuns, those evil priests, they were murdering the indigenous kids, too. That's the ticket. we got to up the ante. Because if a guy like Thompson Highway is saying, man, we all benefited, which is what he's saying, oh, we got to have a better story then. They were murdering the children and burying them in unmarked graves. And some of them were eating the kids, too. Yeah, yeah. I remember reading about that. Horrible stuff. And of course, the little ferret, well, he went on TV because he was devastated, truly. He was devastated. Indigenous communities across this country have my commitment that they will get the resources necessary to recover and document as much as possible these kids in these graves. As much as possible. Straight from central casting this guy, right? Every time I see him, he's got a different hairstyle. Yeah. He's fooling with his beard all the time. He's constantly shaving. He's growing the hair, cutting the hair. He's an actor. He is an actor. He's a narcissistic little actor. Yet when he comes on TV and says, we're going to do everything we can, everybody starts fanning their faces and getting upset and buying into the nonsense. When is it going to stop? Because you know the truth about little ferret, right? I think our leader, Trudeau, I don't think I've ever heard him say a true word. <laughs> but again, we'll throw that picture up on the screen. I want you to remember this, because this is what you saw at the time when you were buying into all this. There's Justin. He's in mourning. He's in full-on performance mode there, friends, holding a teddy bear just right for the cameras. You see that? Kneeling at a fake news grave and pretending to care about genocide that never happened. You, see, you already know how this works or you wouldn't be watching this show. But it's so important to remember that whether we're talking Ukraine, COVID, whatever it is, that performance is what we're getting. It's wag the dog on everything. Whenever their lips are moving, they're lying. Not 
one body was found. But 80 Christian churches burned to the ground. It's the latest in a string of arson or vandalism against churches across Canada. They hit 43 churches and 10 were hit in a single day in Calgary. 10 churches, one city, one day. Shocking. Those 10 incidents happening in Alberta province. A pillar of the community over a century years old reduced to rubble overnight in a blaze. The arson and vandalism follows revelations of hundreds of unmarked graves at former if boarding schools for indigenous well, children, many which were Catholic run. You see, I, I, I take this pretty personally. This is my church. I love my church. My children are all baptized Catholics. My fathers go back generations, five generations of Catholic journalists defending the church. And they're coming out and they're just trashing the church and nobody cares. Nobody stands up for it. They have so emasculated the priesthood and the hierarchy of the Catholic Church that nobody stands up to them when they do this. You know those 80 churches that were burned up in Canada? Many of them served indigenous Christian communities. Did you know that? They were the beloved churches of the tribes up there. And they were saying, don't burn our churches. Leave us alone. What are you doing? Fake news like this is dangerous, but nobody, nobody cares about the tribe, really. They don't care about the indigenous peoples. You know, in their feathers and in their war paint, they trot them out there for the little photo ops on TV. But in the minds of these globalists, the indigenous people are nothing more than useful idiots. <laughs> They're extras in the production. This is why Francis went to Canada put on the feather headdress, started talking about, what was it, the Grandma of the West Wind or something? Do you guys remember this? The Grandma of the West Wind, we got to listen to her and the four directions or whatever was going on up there. I'll open the four directions. And before I do that, I'd like for you to put your hands on your heart, each one of you. The heart can be like a talking stick, but that's where the Creator put wisdom in humans. And we often need to remind ourselves of this. It's an important gesture to connect ourselves with that wisdom. I asked the Western grandmother to give us access to the sacred circle of spirits. And then the pontiff. The successor of St. Peter, Vicar of Christ, visible head of the church on earth, apologizes for the Catholic missionaries who brought Christ to the indigenous peoples. Apologized. He apologized for a genocide that never happened. And wounds reopened just last year when nearly a thousand sets of human remains were found on the grounds of some of those schools. The Pope paying his respects at a cemetery and meeting with survivors. That's another actor, friends. Playing a right, playing a role, playing a part as they bury Christianity and get ready for this new one world religion, Christ free, of course. So why does Francis go to Canada? Why does he do all these stunts? Well, it's because he's so compassionate. And see, we can't understand that level of compassion because, well, we're, we're the unwashed masses, right? He's up here when it comes to compassion, so they want you to think. All this nonsense about compassion is the manipulations of snakes pulling in the useful idiots, who perhaps are genuinely compassionate, to, uh, what would you say, to further their unbelievably narrowly self-centered and destructive agenda. Pulling in the useful idiots. That's most of the people we see going along with the synod on synodality, you know? So when you ask yourself, how can people be clueless enough to buy the politically correct line, the answer is, well, they're not very sophisticated verbally. And so if you offer them a solution that's a one-stop, fits-all solution, it's all power, then they buy that because it's a comprehensive explanation for the world. There's a self-serving aspect to it, and they have no capacity for critical thought. So if you're falling for... Justin Trudeau, if you're falling for the this fall you're gonna die thing, so get the mask. Well, 
If you're falling for Pope Francis's synod on synodality, the whole listening thing, <laughs> you think he's serious about that? He really wants to listen to the youth and to the marginalized? No, no, he's got a full-blown revolution going on. It's already going on, it's already happening. All they need is justification by listening, pretending to listen to you. Just like they pretended to kneel at the mass graves. Everybody would be like, mm, yeah, we gotta do something about this, right? And here's the thing, friends, we have to, we cannot let them demoralize us. We cannot allow them to think they have the power to pull this off, because they don't. But the, the only way, the most efficient way for those of us who are not zombies, 